Hey everyone, I'm Mansi. I'm a product manager um, in Google Research, and I think a lot about how we can use AI to tackle problems of climate change and the, its tremendous impact on human health. So we are experiencing hotter and hotter years as the planet is warming, and regions around the world are experiencing unprecedented heat waves. In fact, how many of you had to change your plans or, you know, disrupt your plans because of heat this, week, uh, this year or in the last year, or saw the orange sky in New York and, and felt angst reading about heat waves this year or in the past few years? I suspect a lot of you. And, and most of us in this room are actually pretty lucky to be pretty privileged, right? You know, we can uh, turn on the AC, go to cool places, but that's not the case for everyone. And so when these heat waves happen and these heat events happen, they are deadly. Worldwide, almost half a million people die each year due to heat-related events. In fact, in the US, more deaths occur because of heat, heat than other natural events like hurricanes, et cetera. And they pose a major threat to human health. Right now, already 25 million people live in places in the world that are affected by extreme heat. And by 2050, with more people migrating to cities and the, uh, the rate at which our planet is warming, as many as 3.5 billion people are uh, uh, estimated to be impacted by extreme heat. That's huge. And, and these extreme heat events or effects are actually particularly high in heat islands. What are heat islands? These are basically urban areas that experience higher temperatures due to structures like roads and buildings that absorb heat and re-emit it. They are ho hotter than the rural areas and surrounding natural areas. People residing in these urban areas, they often experience the worst impact of extreme heat. It is a health risk, worse air pollution, and increased energy demands. And this is where strategies like cool roofs can really help. Um, along with increasing tree cover, so trees, you know, of course, are, an, uh, are a great way to reduce heat, cool roofs are one of the simplest and cost-effective strategy that cities can use to reduce the urban heat island effect. If you're not familiar with cool roofs, these are basically roofs that are built of reflective material that reflect sunlight and absorb less heat. Just like wearing a lighter color keeps you cooler on hot days, these reflective roofs stay cool and they keep the buildings cooler. Uh, for buildings that don't have air conditioning, reducing the internal temperature could prevent heat-related um, deaths and illnesses. And for buildings that do have air conditioning, cool roofs reduce the need for air conditioning and reduce energy bills. In fact, city-wide adoption of cool roofs can reduce urban temperatures, mitigating the urban heat effect. It can lower peak energy demand, improve air quality, and offset the carbon emissions by lowering temperatures. Studies done in Sacramento and a few other areas have shown that uh, increasing the reflectivity of surfaces like roofs, even pavements, and increasing trees in cities and in urban areas can lower temperatures up to four degrees centigrade. That's, that's huge. And so we've been looking at uh, finding ways to help cities and urban planners find ways to mitigate the effect of urban heat islands. And, and our goal is to provide insights that city leaders can use to plan, advocate, and evaluate ways to increase the adoption of cool roofs. Imagine if every roof in a city was cool, it was reflective, and, and it was absorbing less heat, less air conditioning. That would be a place I would want to live in. We actually spoke with a number of cities, with urban planners and experts, and we learned that cities actually do not really have a reliable way to measure the reflectivity of their roofs. Which roofs are actually reflective, which are not, as they take action to actually you know, pass policies, building codes, provide financial rebates uh, to encourage cool roofs, they don't know, how, they can't, don't have a great way to measure are they making progress or not. So we started with building a model to accurate, as, accurately estimate the reflectivity of roofs. There is actually a way to measure that reflectivity of the Earth's surface. So there are satellites like the European Space Agency's Sentinel-2 satellite that regularly measures many things along, across the surface, including the reflectivity of the surface. The problem, though, is that these are pretty coarse measurements. So these are 10-meter pixels, which makes it really hard to identify roof features, except on extremely large buildings. 
So what we do is we take that, um, those measurements from the Sentinel-2 satellite data, we combine that, we use machine learning to combine that with aerial imagery. So Google you know, has a, a really great high resolution aerial imagery that you see in, uh, in the satellite view on Google Maps. Um, and we, we also have a really good categorization of uh, the surface features, right? Where are the building outlines, the roads, the pavements? We feed all of this data into a large machine learning model and we are able to then infer that surface reflectivity at a pretty high resolution, at less than one meter uh, resolution. And so the result is this albedo map. So albedo is a term for solar reflectivity, how much solar uh, uh, light is being reflected back. The result is a map for every single rooftop based on our analysis. And we've calibrated these measurements uh, with ground truth data that is used to uh, calibrate the Sentinel-2 measurements and, and, and we've estimated in our, uh, with pretty low um, errors. We took this data and we've built a lab, a cool roofs lab or a tool that we've shared with some cities where uh, on our Environmental Insights Explorer, this is a platform that Google provides to cities to look, provide climate related insights, whether it is um, the transportation emissions, building emissions, our tree canopy data. We've made our cool roofs lab available on the um, EIE platform. And what you see here is a map of LA where uh, it's color coded based on the average reflectivity. So urban planners can use this data tool to understand at the city level what the overall reflectivity is for all the rooftops at the sub-city level, neighborhood level. They can also combine it with uh, socioeconomic data, equity data, so median household income, uh, vulnerability data, temperature data. So they can start prioritizing where in the city there is the highest potential for strategies like cool roofs. And then, of course, we also provide this information at the rooftop level. So again, here I'm showing uh, uh, the, all of the roofs. And then you can, they can understand what the reflectivity is at individual roof level, uh, what the slope of the roof is, because that matters. And they can start prioritizing certain buildings that could be used as pilot projects or efforts to uh, convert them to cool roofs. So where are we right now? We launched a pilot earlier this year uh, in four regions. LA, Phoenix, Austin, Miami did. Um, uh, these locations should not be surprising. These are some of the hottest parts of the country. Many of these places also have a new position called a chief heat officer that's been created in the last couple years, you, which tells you just how seriously this problem is being taken. Um, and we are soon uh, launching our pilot in 11 more cities, including New York City. And uh, you know, work never really gets done, right? So beyond this, we, uh, our team is actively working on adding more capabilities and richness to our products. So we are uh, adding capabilities to identify the change in reflectivity over time. It's not an easy problem at all. Like as a product manager, you know, I imagine and assume things are easy, and once you start getting into it, you realize it's not. So I'm really grateful to work with a team of excellent researchers who are tackling this problem. We're also building a model to. Uh, to predict the effect of strategies, cooling strategies like trees, like cool roofs, pavements on urban temperatures. Imagine if we can give decision makers the tools to say, if we prioritize these actions, this is how much we can lower the temperature in our cities. That can be really powerful for them to effect policy, effect change. And we're also working on expanding our pilot to more cities, including to the Global South. So Global South are really countries that are often called the developing world, places like India, many African countries, Latin America. And this is where most of the world population likely to be affected by extreme heat resides. So I'm really excited uh, for our work to expand in more places in the world. One uh, thing that I really like about this project too is that this work was started as a passion project, 20% uh, volunteer time that many Googlers give because people were just really passionate and then we brought together a large team and, and you know, built momentum around this work. So it's really great to be able to do things that you personally care about and use the really great research at Google for things like this. Right, thank you.